Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to video number eight on DSL domain specific language introduced by Spark SQL, part four expressions. Now we have explored the column class, which defines transformations on columns and also the functions object, object, which also defines a lot of functions, which we can use to transform columns. However, there is another way how we can um, transform columns in Spark, which I do not recommend using. Because what we can also do is write a string expression and let Spark interpret the string expression during the runtime. So we don't have any compiler safety if we use a simple string and write the expression within the string. Now there is a reference for the functionality we can use in such um, SQL expressions, which we are going to look at as well. All right, let's head over to our IDE. So first I want to show you how we can use such string expressions. So there is a function in, in Spark called expressions, and we have to import that one, which basically, which actually takes a string parameter. And here we can write, write an expression string. So for example, we can write um, current timestamp, which is um, a function also provided by the um, functions object, which we saw previously. And Spark will actually take this string expression and interpret it at the runtime. And what this expression function does is basically it returns a column. So we get another uh, reference to a column object. So it will be evaluated. Now we can store this in a value as well. For example, we call this time stem column and store our reference to our column. The alternative way, the one that we have seen before, is to use the function current timestamp directly from the functions object that we have seen. So this will be imported, you see in, in line 20 up. So up there in the imports, you can now see that the function has been imported. But now we also have a reference to a column because this is returned by this object, by this function call. So it's basically the same, um, basically yield the same results using these two methods. However, if you wanted now to, for whatever reason, for example, cast this timestamp into a string, we can also write this in our um, function up here in SQL syntax. So here we would now have um, cast the current timestamp as string. And here we would simply add another function call, um, which would be cast. And then we have to provide the data, uh, the data type object um, in Scala. And here we would like to use a string type from, from the package sql.types.stringType. So that would yield the same result. And let's store this one, this column here in a reference as well, or in a value as well. Let's say it's a time stamp uh, from function, from functions. And this one we call time stamp from expression. All right. Now what we can do is to say, okay, on our data frame DF, we would like to select these two columns, timestamp from expression and timestamp from function, t exactly. And then let's say print this one. So what we will get is a data frame having as many rows as our DF data frame, but only two columns, which is two times the current timestamp, just created in a different way. Now, what we can also do is, for example, here in our expression, we can also use the as function to assign a new ali alias. So let's call this timestamp expression. And here we simply add another call. And here we say timestamp functions. And if we, sh uh, if we print this data frame out to the screen now, and if we run the application, we will see that we end up with two identical columns. All right, so here we can see that we have two identical columns, which we would have expected. So if I minimize this now, 
I show, show you the downside of using sh uh, such a string expression. So if I had a typo here, for example, we call it mistakenly current timestamp for whatever reason, the compiler doesn't complain. So we don't get an error in our IDE here yet because it's simply a string. It doesn't know how to interpret the string. Only once we run our application, we will see an error because this is not a function available in the SQL built-ins in Spark. So here we now get an um, exception. And yeah, if we look at it, it says cannot resolve function currents timestamp. And this is the downside of using these string expressions. So let me reduce, uh, let me remove that S here and show you that this cannot happen here because if I wrote currents timestamp here, it would tell me in, uh, immediately that this is not a function it can import. So it has not been defined in our functions object. So we get some compile time safety. All right, so next I wanna show you which functions are available um, for these SQL expressions. They are called SQL built-ins in Spark. So let's head over to the browser and then we have the documentation, latest release, that's what you're familiar with. And then we have some API docs here and there's Scala, Java, Python, and so on. And there's also SQL built-in functions. And here you can basically see what you can use within such uh, string expressions. For example, we have used um, current timestamp. Here we go. And it's defined here. So it basically returns the current current timestamp in this format here. That's exactly what it what the function does implemented by the M functions object. So what I also wanted to show you is a method called which we can call on our data frame, which is called select expression. And as you can see here, it takes a variable number of um, string expressions. So from our data frame, we can also use string expressions to select columns. For example, we could say um, cast the column date as string um, or we could also select, for example, the column open plus one. Or we could also use a function here, for example, current timestamp like this. And then print the result to the console once we run it, um, which would yield a data frame having three columns selected and potentially transformed using string or SQL built-in functions. So here we go. So we have yeah, our data frame as expected. All right, another thing I wanted to show you is that we can um, run SQL queries through Spark SQL as well. Uh, therefore, we would use Spark, so our Spark session, um, and it has a method called SQL, and it takes as parameter an SQL query. And here, for example, you could write select asterisk from DF, where DF relates to the table name. However, this um, reference to our data frame value in Scala doesn't work. Therefore, we need to register our data frame as a table name such that Spark can pick it up in the SQL query. And that one we would also like to show so, so that it's printed to the console. And now we would like to register our DF, our data frame in Scala um, as an SQL table. And therefore we can call on this data frame, create temp, temp view, temporary view. And we have to provide the name we would like to use in the query. And this should work as well. So now we have this error here still which is not correct. So if I run this now, we should see that it prints the first 20 lines of our data frame to the console simply through the SQL API. All right, and here we go. We have the entire data frame with all the columns um, queried with the SQL um, API.
However, I also do not recommend using this as we have um, the Scala API available, which is much more powerful and it gives us a lot of compile time safety, which we can also use in our IDE. And I just pointed these things out to you for giving a complete overview of what's available. <music>